started streaming. Hey everyone, welcome to our live stream today. It's Memorial Day weekend. For those of you that are out doing things, have a great time and uh, eat a lot of food because I'm going to do that. And uh, today's discount code that goes through the weekend Memorial Day sale is RB531. It's only Memorial Day here in the United States, but this is a great, great weekend and my kids are out of school. It's perfect, right? I don't have to get up in the morning anymore, which is, that's the best part of it. Anyways, um, so this has really come up, this particular topic, a lot. And it comes up every time I do my top 10 countdowns. There's a couple things that happen. First of all, in the comments section, most of the people hate the, the music. It's people from this channel, though. It's not your general public. There's 2.3 million people, but, you know, out of the 300,000 people plus that have watched the video from yesterday or two days ago, um, the, the comments were much more positive. But one of the songs, Leave Before You Love Me, the Jonas Brothers and Marshmallow track. When I was playing the song, I couldn't figure out what it was. I was singing the melody. And I just left it there. I didn't try. I called up a couple of my friends and, and I called up my brother. Nobody answered the phone because I was going to sing the melody to them to see if they could think of what it was. So I was like, well, people in the comment section will tell, say who it was. So there were five different songs that it reminded people of. I put them in order of how accurate they were going back and listening to it. The one, and they, it was pretty even, although this air supply song, it depends on what year people are born in to what they say they, you know, what songs they're familiar with. Lost in, in, uh, Lost in Love was one of the ones. That one was pretty much a direct rip of the melody. Then uh, Last Christmas, Wham, that's the one that Billy thought it was uh, right off the bat because he didn't know the air supply song. It was 1989. Uh, then Can't Smile Without You, Barry, Barry Manilow. I didn't think it sounded like that. Um, uh, Instant Crush, Daft Punk, recent song, 2013. I don't think it sounded that much like that. There's a, The chord progression was kind of like it. And then Circles by Post Malone, which came out two years ago, which I didn't think it sounded anything like that. This, though, it was pretty much, you know, almost a direct rip. Same key, too, right, Billy? Was it in the same key? Um... I think it was. Yeah, yeah same key. When they copy the songs, they don't even bother to change the key. You know, it's like with the Justin Bieber song that that uh, is a bar borrowing from Toto. Okay, so why does this happen though? Why is music? Uh, I call this why why today's music is so boring. The regression of musical innovation and um, and you guys hear me talk a lot about this a lot of people are like oh rick just likes you know complex songs or whatever but that's well that is true actually but no if you go back historically okay we can go back through each decade i started write, writing down songs uh that just kind of average songs that are that are far more complicated than anything that you hear on today's radio with the exception of leave the door open Okay, so Leave the Door Open is the Bruno Mars song, right? Um, and then the chorus. Then um, the chorus is... Um, now these are pretty standard kind of chord progressions. You have the, I mean, it goes to E flat from F. Um, and then there's a part where it goes. Uh, now you rarely will hear a diminished chord anytime in pop music. This is a rare thing. You rarely hear dominant 11 chords like this, like this F over G chord. This is unusual. But if we go back historically, I said, you know, it sounds like Earth, Wind, and Fire. But if you think about like fantasy. Um, right. That's the E 
minor to D vamp. Uh, sorry. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the chorus. <laughs> There's your fantasy, right? Uh, there's your diminished chord. So you have this dominant 11, you have major 7s, you have minor 7s, you have tons of key changes there. We have E sus D, you have this B sus, you've got, I mean, it changes keys all over the place, so even right here. Um, not, nothing, that, so, so leave the door open is actually just kind of a... Uh, in complexity, it's like um, out of ten, it's 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 a three compared to the uh, to fantasy, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And that's not even one of Earth, Wind, and Fire's most complex songs. Okay, let's go back and talk about '60s music, right? You guys know, guys know I like the '60s. Um, um, da, 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 da. So something by George Harrison by the Beatles, F, E flat, G um, to G major. They already have modulated. Uh, da, 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 something in the way she moves C to C major 7 to C7 secondary down da, 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 da. Uh, uh, da, na, na, na. Don't leave her now Sorry my bad singing no, no, no. to so many different places, right? Yet, it was a number one song. It's a song that gets played on the radio all the time. We'll take any Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven, or... Baby, I'm gonna leave you. Then experimenting all over the place, right? With these uh, with these different chord progressions, we don't have to go back that far. We can go to. I love to use this black hole suns. I mean, right in the intro is more complicated than anything on the radio today. And that we haven't even gotten to the melody yet, right? That song turns around so many different ways. It's actually hard to remember. Um, you know, you could take any Nirvana song. Pretty much any grunge song is way more complicated than anything that's on the radio today. Far more complicated. Any Nirvana song is more complicated than anything on the radio today. So why is this happening, though? Why? Um, I'll, I'll give you another example of another song I thought about. If you guys know Radiohead, there's a song that they put on the bends. Um, Already, it's like C E flat key change, key change, key change, key change. That's a that's a um, a tritone substitute. The second it moves chromatically. Do it to you. They have tritone movement. I mean. 
That's not even the whole song. It changes. There's other changes in the song. Why is it that people, you know, 25 years ago when Radiohead put that song out, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Or 40 years ago when Fantasy was on the radio, people just accepted songs like that or something or any Beatles song or any, uh, you know, you name it. Every song from the 70s that was a hit just about was way more complex than anything that's out today. Every song just about on the list uses one or, or you know, four, one, six, five, or four, one, five, or one, five, four, six, or one, six, five, four. I mean, that's, that's like it. That is pretty much the vocabulary of popular music. Why? Well, there's reasons that I've given um, that the nobody ever wants to take a chance. Writers don't want to take a chance. And this started happening in the early 2000s when A&R people that signed bands started to, uh, when, when money started going down in the music industry, uh, they started hiring producers like myself, not me not being one that had big hit songs or anything, to go in and write with artists because they didn't feel that the artists were good enough writers. Because you had to have a hit, every, you have to have, have, have a section that uh, connects with people every seven seconds or so. You started getting songs like Since You've Been Gone, right, that has that has a six bar chorus and a four bar or six bar phrase and a four bar phrase in the chorus, like a 10 bar chorus. And you started getting these multi-hook songs, right? But they're still, and that's complicated compared to most of the stuff today that is so dead simple. Um, most songs today use the pentatonic scale for the melody. They just do. Pentatonic scale is, uh, would be like, you know, in the key of G, G, A, B, uh, D, E. You find most melodies are pentatonic melodies. The way you get away from pentatonic melodies is by, is by, or, is by having chord progressions like that, or like Soundgarden, or like, who, or like Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's a key change there. Uh, I mean, you can tell where the, it, that thing's just going all over the place, right? So you have to write a melody that's interesting if you're gonna actually follow along with the chords. And there are some really basic rules for songwriting, right? Most songs use what we call chord tones. Like, I'm actually going to give you the reason why, okay? Most songs are, most melodies of hit songs are based on chord tones. What are chord tones? Well, if you have a C major chord, that equals the note C, E, G, right? Once again, this is all in my Beato book. Uh, you want to support the channel, RB531, and it's my ear training course, 60% off my Beata Book Bundle, 700-page PDF, and then my ear training course. People are like, how do you, Rick, how do you figure out songs so quickly? Well, they're so easy. That's why. If it was Earth, Wind, and Fire, it would take me 10 seconds longer. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. That's actually true. No. Uh, these are the chord tones in a C major scale, Okay. Now, and let's say that I took that Radiohead song, which went, the pre-chorus goes from C to F sharp major, to F major. Okay, now, it, we are, so we're going to say, so I'm going to tell you that most songs, the chord, the notes of the chord are the notes of the melody, with occasional passing tones or suspensions. But for the most part, more, most hit songs are based on the notes that are in the chords, and triads have three notes, Okay. When you get into um, songs like Fantasy, though, they're using a lot of seventh chords, which have four notes in them, so you have more choices for your melody. F sharp major has F sharp, A sharp, C sharp in it. There are no common tones between those two keys, right? No common tones, right? You can't go from C major to F sharp major and use any of the same notes. None of those notes work. And then you go to F major, 
F major has these three notes. So from this chord to this chord, there's no common tones, none. So that gives you, starts to give you chromatic melodies, interesting melodies. You have to go to different places. This note C can't stay on that note, right? If I play the note C, right? I don't have a sustain pedal, Billy. That's okay. I'll play the guitar. I'll play the guitar, it doesn't matter. So if I have, if I have C major, and I sing the note C, although that note actually sounds good on that chord because that's the sharp 11. Da, that note actually works between the two. But the note C is the sharp 4. A uh, little, little trick here, right? C equals the sharp 4. Now the sharp 4 is a tension note. It's an unusual note. It's a dissonance against this second chord. Think about this. Da, well, that happens to be the note that Tom York holds on. Uh, right? Uh, that's a dissonant note. So it forces you into dissonance. If you're going to even hold on a note. Otherwise, you have to go. Da, you have to go. Da, you have to have a melody that is chromatic. Okay? If I take the note E on the C chord. It has to move somewhere. That note is going to have to move there because that's in the F sharp chord. Da, da, da. It could be. Right? Or. Da, da. Oh, sorry. Right? It's kind of a weird movement. Da, da, da. You could do that. Da, da gives you some interesting movement, but you get my point here. You know, if you have a chord progression like this, you have to make an, you have to create an interesting melody. Anything that is chromatic or out of key that changes key forces you to come up with more, a more interesting melody that doesn't sound like five other songs. The reason that these songs, like this Jonas Brother thing, sounds like five other songs is because they're not doing anything that people weren't doing. You know, they're just writing the most basic nursery rhyme melodies. I don't know how many people it took to write that song. I have no idea. Probably nine, though. It probably took nine people to write that song, right? The whole reason I got on here to, to talk, to start my channel was to hopefully, I was like, I mean, I didn't know no ideas that I was going to have a, a channel with 2 million followers on it, subscribers. But it was like, maybe I could teach some people about, about music, about how to think of things in a different way, right? Simple things like this. This is very simple. What notes are in these three chords? How are they related? You know, if, if you're going to be, if you're, going to write a melody and you have have a chromatic chord progression you have to think of new things but if you still if you write the same diatonic when we say diatonic that means it doesn't change keys every song that was in the top 10 all the country songs they were all pretty much one four five six occasionally you had a uh and and i marvel people like rick you're too easy on these songs you're too easy on it. I, look if i find one chord that's out of key i'm like Thank God. I mean, I'll take one chord out of key. We got to start somewhere to build this back up, to build the innovation in popular music back up. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, if you just listen to different music, look, a lot of the metal songs people complain about too, they sound bad. Why? Well, there's a number of reasons because they use the same, a lot of the songs use the same drop riffs that people have mined over and over and over. That's a whole nother discussion. The, the drop D tunings, when I say drop D, right? Most songs that use a drop tuning, whether it's drop D, drop D flat, drop C, whatever, base their riffs off the open string. Very few songs don't. When I think of Nirvana on a plane... On a plane is very sophisticated. Tell myself better than you. No, it's wrong. What should I do? Who does that do? D, G, major 
7 sus 2, B flat major 7 sus 2, hello, key change. But all these drop riffs have been overmined too. So in addition to playing riffs, not all the bands do this, but they've overmined these drop tunings so much and play so many of the same predictable patterns. These same patterns are just in so many songs, right? They need to try some different tunings. What about drop C sharp? I don't hear anybody using that. You can't play that chord in a drop, right? That's all I did was tune the low string down another half step, so it's it's, and you come up with. And you come up with a completely different vocabulary, right, to write music with. Just by doing that, by just changing it up a little bit, right? This is why I harp on music theory. It's just to try to give people new ideas. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's why I wrote my book, is to teach people things. Like how chord, chord progressions are constructed, what notes are in each chord, you know? How to improve what you do as a songwriter, as a, as a jazz guitar player, as a blues player. How do you go in some different places that other people haven't gone? You know, how do you create that excitement of like, whoa, what is that? I never, when I do these top 10 countdowns, doesn't matter what list I'm doing, the rock list, the metal list, the pop list, I never go, oh, I can't, oh, wow, give me a second, let me figure that out. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a second. I don't do that. Why? Because I can pretty much predict where they all go. It's like it starts at a major chord. Okay, what's going to be next? Four, one, or five? Oh, six? Okay. Well, then five and four are coming after, right? Or whatever. Five and one. No, whatever. They're going to come in some order. And then once it goes by once, it's pretty much going to do that. Doesn't matter what it is. It can be hip hop, whatever. Hip hop has weird chromatic things. Like Cardi B, we talked about the uh, the chromatic bass line on WAP, and I said that they should do Owls and Chains. Somebody needs to do that mashup of that, of those two songs, of Them Bones and, and Cardi B of WAP. Come on, somebody please do that. I kind of did it. I tried to sing it with it. Um, so this is really, you know, this is kind of where we're at and everything. But for me to go there and criticize what people are doing, I'm just trying to explain why it's so boring to people. And typically the people that say, that say it's boring are people that are older, that have that have been fed a diet of, of much, much more, a rich diet of nutritious songs, okay? And then we're just kind of eating Fruit Loops now. Right. This is it. We're, we're eating cereal that's on the on the bottom shelf. You know, in supermarkets, they put all the sugar cereals uh, on the bottom. And then as you get to the top, they got all the healthy cereals on the top because they don't want people be reaching up there to get it to get those. So you, you get all your Kellogg stuff is on the bottom and then your whatever is on the top, you know. All your granolas and things that, that uh, health foods that cost 10 times as much are on the top shelf. They don't want you buying those things. So this is really kind of a symptom of the society, right? Of, of, the, of the food versus the nutrition of food or lack of nutrition versus the nutrition of musical food, if you will. Okay. I like spicy food, you know, I do. I want to I want to have a zing when I eat something. I'm Italian. I like spicy food. <laughs> so I want to hear things that are spicy that I'm like, 
you know. I want to hear him. Black Hole Sun starts with a sus chord. A sus chord, right? It's not a major chord. Then it goes to a six chord. Then it goes to power chord, power chord. Then it goes back to a, a different sus chord. You have this one, you have this one. Then to that. I was like, who thinks of that? Well, Chris Cornell did. And pretty much all the guys of the grunge era thought, thought of things like this. And the Beatles thought of it. But that's what they were, imi they were imitating the Beatles, you know? And Zeppelin and, and, you know, I always will play my favorite. Who said Keith Richards was simple? Angie. Okay. Once again. This is why I created things, an ear training program and my, my Beato book, is to teach people. This is why you buy these things. It's not, this is for me to give you things here to, that will help you, right? This is why I do a discount when I do these live streams and everything so people can, can buy these things and follow along with my videos and know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about a sus chord, you're like, What's a sus4 chord? Just look it up in the book. It's on page, I don't know, five. It's right in the beginning, Billy, right? Mm -hmm. It's right in triads. It just I I tell you how they're how they're built, what intervals are build them and everything. You know, it's how chord progressions get to get uh, work together. You you're always hearing me talk about secondary dominance or major three chords. I explain this stuff in these live streams all the time. All you do is open up the book. What's Rick talking about? You go to the first chapter. All the basic music theory is there that you need to know. And you follow along, you just look up the titles of the things I'm talking about. Okay, if I talk about tritone sub, let's go to tritone sub, C to F sharp, because the bass line is moving a tritone. And then down a half step, right? And it was like, what is a half step? It's the first thing in the book. What is an interval? Interval is dis distance between two notes. This is why it's important to know music, at least to know a little bit of music theory, because it will send you in directions as an artist, as a writer, in places that you wouldn't naturally go. And it, the ear training, knowing what these intervals are. When I hear C, G, I don't, I don't have perfect pitch, but I know a perfect fourth, you know? I know what a perfect fourth is. You don't need perfect pitch to know what a perfect fourth is, right? That's the interval of a perfect fourth. When I hear the bass do that, I'm like, I hear a major chord. I hear it going down to fourth. It could be F to C. It could be B to A. It could be C to G. It doesn't matter. I know what the thing is. And once I figure out what the first note is, C, okay, that's second note's G. Then I got A minor. Then I got F. It's... And, you know, you just do this stuff. You repeat these things. Discount code RB531. This is why I wrote these things, so that people can enrich their lives and their listening experience. It's not just so that you're... It's to be a better musician, but it's also for people that are non-musicians to understand what they're hearing and maybe start searching out things like, okay, well, what's he talking about? Why is Earth, Wind, and Fire? Let me compare these things. Let me... Let me get a chord chart for this and or wait no, I don't even need a chord chart because I can figure it out. Wow, that's amazing, right? A lot of chords there. E minor seven, A minor seven, uh D over uh C over D, D eleven. G major 7, C major 7, B flat diminished 7, B sus 4, B. Now you have to have a good ear for that, right? Well, duh. So that's perfect fifth down. So I know, and I know that's a minor chord. That's a minor chord. I can hear the seventh on those. Da, da, D, G, C, B flat, B. Okay, I got the bass line. I know what those intervals are. What are the co chord co qualities? Minor chord, minor seven, minor seven, dominant eleven, G major, uh, major seven, major seven, diminished seven, sus four to, to major. 
if you develop that vocabulary of recognized sounds, which I, t I always am harping about, and you can recognize the bass motion, that's why we drill intervals. It's the first thing in the ear training course. Drilling intervals, just basically one note to the next. What is this note? Plays a note, and then it goes, let's down a, down a fit. Uh, thank you, Billy. Uh, so that's that's the deal there. This is this is what because we are really living in the era of uh, it's a regression of musical innovation, and it doesn't have to be. This should be the most uh, the best time ever right now, right? We've got all these learning aids. You got YouTube to teach people how to play everything the right way. If you watch the right channels, <laughs> right? I mean, you got all these super virtuosos out there that have no gigs. Right, because people are consuming the people don't want to hear that super virtuoso music, because because their ears are just attuned to four chords in a major key. So you got to broaden it out. You got to start adding these things. Anyways, my that's my rant for today. You want to support my channel? Buy something here in my store. Uh, discount goes through Monday through the weekend. Sixty percent off my seven hundred page PDF be out of book bundle. And my ear training course, 40% off my Beato ear training course. Um, enjoy your weekend. Sorry for the rant, but, you know, I just read the comments on these things and just people like, people act like it's me that's making up these. I'm like, hey, this is the chart. I'm not, they're not my songs. I just am, you know, showing you what the, what the, what the deal is with them. You know, I don't write the songs. I'm not Barry Manilow. Anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, have a great, for those of you here uh, watching the, the Memorial Day weekend, have a great weekend. For those of you that are elsewhere, have a great weekend as well. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the bell icon. Only 12% of people that follow my channel hit the bell icon. That's it. That's actually kind of common for YouTube channels, but that's it, 12%. I know people are like, I always go back to Rick's channel because I do the same thing. I type in the channels that I like to go. I just type in their names and you just go there. But it actually helps because YouTube actually looks at when people subscribe. They help move videos more. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Thanks. See ya.